Hello. Finally, we have reached the end of religion in fantasy. Boy, let me tell you, the end boss was hard. So today, let's talk about atheism in fantasy and how you can use it to drive the plot forward. I'm going to break down today's video into models of atheism, how atheism answers the big questions, how atheism moderates the social contract, which is the two things that we said right in the beginning that a religion does. And finally, I'm going to talk about how you can use atheism to drive the plot forward in a fantasy world. My name is Marie Mullaney and this is Just In Time Worlds. If you like this kind of content, please do hit the like button. If you really like this kind of content, I have a Ko-fi account over at ko-fi.com, just in time worlds, where you can buy me a cup of coffee for one euro. Okay, enough of that. Let's get cracking. There are three models of atheism that I have seen applied and utilized. The first is, there is simply no God. There is no Godhead. There is no spiritual force. There is nothing driving the universe and people just get on with their lives. I've only ever seen this implemented by Anne McCaffrey and she used it both in Pern and in her talent series uh, where she doesn't use magic per se, but she uses talents of the mind. How she does that is she literally just ignores the question of a godhead. The big questions are answered the same way that atheists answer them in our world. That is to say, evolution is the answer, and when you're dead, you're dead. The end, Jim. In terms of addressing the social contract, again, she has a complex society with laws that govern the social contract, and it is mediated by the society in and of itself without resorting to any form of religion or per se any philosophy. While it is very definitively a realistic application of atheism, I would say that it does leave you with some lost opportunity in terms of a fantasy world. There's a lot to be said for a fantasy world with philosophy where you can build a very different society from what we have today in our world. However, I'd also say that it depends on the story you want to tell. If you don't want to focus on the effects of religion and you don't want to address those, then going with a model of there is no God and no one cares, move along, is very effective because it allows you to focus instead on the elements of the story you do want to tell. The second model that you can apply is the God is dead or doesn't care. So there is a God, there is perhaps a spiritual force, but it's inaccessible to most people and it doesn't care. It doesn't need worship, it doesn't desire worship. The benefit of going with this model of atheism is that you can have your atheistic societies while still having completely inexplicable and softer experiences of magic. What this allows you to do is to have magic where things can come from the Godhead in unpredictable ways. But at the same time, your society can be largely atheistic and therefore not religious driven. The last type of religion that I have seen implemented as an atheism is the there is a God. There is a force, but it is an evil force. And to prevent it from rising to power, we are all going to very firmly be atheists. And anybody who's not atheist is going to get stabbed in the face. To a certain extent, this was what the emperor was trying to do in Warhammer 40k. He knew that there were forces that were inexplicable via science. And yet he started the truth 
religion, the religion based on science and atheism. And it wasn't the religion, it was literally moving forward with there is no God. So that there would also be no chaos powers. Now, I am not a complete expert on Warhammer 40k, but that is how I read the imperial truths and the lie that lies at the center of the imperial truth. Another place where I've seen it implemented to say there is a God, but we have to prevent it from rising is in Harry Dresden. In, in the Harry Dresden books, there is a secret society that is dedicated to ensuring that the name of the what amounts to the Cthulhu Old Ones is never remembered and never spoken so that the Old Ones remain powerless and can be prevented from rising. The benefit of this model of atheism is that it gives you an awful lot of scope to play with. Because if people start becoming non-atheistic, you can have a police force literally like running around in the society preventing people from believing. And there can be people who say, but the gods aren't that bad. And there can be people who say, well, yes, actually the gods are that bad. The gods wrecked the world and they are not to be worshipped. I haven't finished the book yet, but I'm busy with Shadow of the Gods, which seems to be based on that principle. It's a very interesting take on it, especially if your gods are of the nature where worship makes them stronger. So if you don't worship them, then they start dying. So those are the three models of atheism as I see them. This is a cut in edit to address me for getting some really important elements in atheism cultures. Atheism can address both the social contract and the big questions by means of a secular religion. What is a secular religion? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? Well, no. The focus of your secular religion can be your state, so in that case the society would likely be one of extreme nationalism. The focus of the religion could also be science, rationality and philosophy. This is what lay at the heart of the imperial truth cults of Warhammer 40k. In that case, it is not necessary to deny that there might be things that cannot be explained. It is only necessary to state that there is a rational explanation somewhere. Bearing in mind that imperial belief in science was also a defense against the rise of the demons of the war. The emperor hoped that by ending all belief he would limit the ruinous powers and the lack of worship would eventually destroy them. This is why imperial truth cults are rabidly atheists and have militant arms that prevent the rise of faith. The interesting part of secular religions is that it still has many of the elements of religion. For example, the rituals of state in a nationalistic secular religion would take the place of religious rituals. Or, in the case of a philosophy-based religion, gatherings to discuss the implications of the philosophy take the place of gatherings to worship a deity. In Warhammer 40k, the oaths of the moment is such a ritual that is taken by space marines. It is an oath where the space marine would swear to achieve something through his own integrity and honesty. No invocation of a higher power would take place, merely the statement before witnesses that the marine would see a task done. Should the marine fail, those who witness the oath would hold him to account. And so you can have the trappings of a religion without the spiritual or deific elements of the religion through secular religions. That is not to say that an atheist society must have a secular religion. Atheism is not really a religion per se, and as such is one of the most diverse societal models. The answer to the big questions can be, we're just animals, nothing matters, and we cooperate in the social contract because we are social animals. Or you can focus on the connection between people in the social hierarchy as Confucianism does defining a person by means of their relationship to others and setting the society at the heart of your philosophy. Or you can make some other philosophy the mediating force of the social contract and have science be the answer to the big questions of why we are here. 
For more on building a philosophy, check out my video on spiritualism. All of these are valid options for atheism in a fantasy society. The approach that you should take is dependent on the story you want to tell. And speaking of story. Right, so let's talk about how to use atheism to create plot tension. The first and obvious one is, let's say that God does exist and you have a sudden outbreak of faith. Now you have conflict between two fundamental opposites where there can be no middle ground. On the one hand, you have people who say, there is no God, we are atheists. And on the other, you have people who say, there is a God and we should worship him. And if your whole society is predicated on atheism and suddenly you have faith rising, you can have a glorious mess that can indeed escalate into an equivalent of a holy war. You can also have this kind of conflict if you have a situation where the people in charge know there's a God, but they are trying to prevent that God from coming to life or entering the world because that God is evil or maybe because that God is good and they are evil. You could play it either way and have a gateway that is protected by people's non-belief in the God. And that can give you an incredible scope for story, both in terms of a novel and in terms of running a, a, a game in a role playing game, because you, your heroes can be on either side of this conflict and the story will be magnificent. You have people running around trying to stop the faith from rising, or you can have people running around trying to get the faith started. Both are great stories. Lastly, you have the inevitable tension of the diametrically opposed views, whether people are in a conflict situation or not, atheism will exist in a society. So let's say you've got a very, very religious society and you've got groups of atheists who say the society is wrong, that creates tension. Or you have an atheist society with small groups of religious people that creates tension. So incorporating atheism into whatever religion that you have implemented is a good idea in order to create that societal tension. And that is the end of atheism in fantasy and also the end of religion in fantasy, the first series. What big theme would you like me to tackle next? Let me know in the comments. And please do hit the like button if you've liked this video, consider subscribing and I will see you next week for another episode of Just In Time World.